Okay, so this is a place that I've always wanted to come to and see. And even though I lived in Vegas for 16 years, I never made it out here. This place is only like 30 minutes outside of Vegas. So, and here I am just now making it. So we are at the historical St. Thomas site and it's a ghost town. I know you guys love ghost towns, so yay. Um, this ghost town was actually used to be a little town in 1865 to 1938 and then the town got washed away by the water and it was underwater for a long time well it's not underwater now go figure so we're gonna hike down the hike is two and a half miles and we're gonna go see this town that used to be here and then drowned underwater and has risen again and I got my hiking partner Christine from Vegas she's been in a few of my videos so here we go Look at how beautiful this place is out here. Like, you have the snow on the mountains in the background over there. All the red rocks around. This is right here in Lake Mead also, by the way, so. Don't see any water, though. Long gone. So we haven't even made it down to uh, St. Thomas yet. And uh, Christine pointed this out. And you can tell from the trail that we're walking on how all of this, all of this out here used to be underwater. Because here's the shells right here on the ground that we're walking over. That's so crazy. So the area that we're in right now, it's actually called the Muddy River Valley. They did a lot of farming in this area in the 1800s and actually um, back, dated back to the 900 AD. I'm reading off this sign right here because you guys know I have a bad memory and it's hard for me to memorize things. I want to give you guys the history as much as I can so I have to read off the sign. So by the late 1800s, settlers were planting a variety of grains, melons, and fruit trees, which flourished after the irrigation system was completed. Vegetable gardens provided much needed food for the hardworking families in the valley. Initially, the settlers of St. Thomas thought they were in Utah or Arizona territories, as the boundary lines were not well defined. December 19, 1870, a boundary survey determined that St. Thomas was actually in Nevada. It's in Nevada. County tax collectors demanded settlers pay several years of back taxes in gold or silver coin immediately. Basically, long story short, so I don't have to read the whole entire thing, they refused to pay those back taxes. So the next day, on December 20th, 1870, the majority voted 63 to 2 to abandon St. Thomas. The original settlers departed, but because of the attractiveness of the area, St. Thomas was gradually repopulated over the next decade. That's pretty cool. They said, no, we're not paying those taxes. We're leaving.
what we all know about the Hoover Dam. So this ghost town was actually here before the Hoover Dam was built. And when the Hoover Dam was built, it filled up Lake Mead. So meaning that's how this town got underwater because this is part of Lake Mead right here. So everybody had to flee their homes and all their stuff when the water started coming into their town here. And that's how everything went underwater. That's because Hoover Dam was built. looks like we made it to St. Thomas. So this right here was the road going into St. Thomas. And then see these little tree stumps over here? These little tree stumps down there. Those actually were trees that lined the road going into St. Thomas. And then whenever the Hoover Dam was built, and the water consumed the town, this town was 70 feet below the water. That's crazy. So this is the whole area right here. And there's still a little bit of structures, ruins out here. I'd live here. It's in the middle of nowhere, it's pretty cool. So this right here actually used to be a house at one time. And then I was just reading off of this thing right here that because me and Christine were just talking about, oh God, how was it out here during the summer times when it's really hot? Cause we all know it gets hot out here in Lake Mead. So apparently what they did is the richer people they had a second story with a balcony where people could sleep as they could catch a breeze. On the bottom floor, it was much hotter. To sleep at night, they would have a bucket of water by their bed and they would wet a sheet and sleep with that over them. When the sheet dried out and it got too hot, they would wake up and get the sheet wet again in order to fall back to sleep. See, they all had it figured out. It's good for me to know because this is kind of how I'm living right now, you know, like with no amenities and stuff. So I'm learning stuff. <laughs> So this is where they got their water from. So they would come here with buckets and fill their buckets up and uh, with water. So they'd have water at their homes and stuff. And these are 18 feet deep. And every once in a while they'd make the smallest person, one of the smallest people climb down in there and scrub the walls and everything to keep it clean.
Okay, so this structure right here was actually their grocery store and their service station. This is where they came and got their groceries, homemade root beer, homemade ice cream, and even gas. You know, those old timey cars, they needed gas back in the day too, so. But yeah, homemade root beer and homemade ice cream. I bet it was really good back in the day. Because I forgot to mention, this whole place was Mormons. So, yeah. That means I know there's a church somewhere around here. schoolhouse so apparently let's see if any of you guys know any of these games right here because these were some of the favorite games that some of these kids like to play the games were called pomp pomp pull away steel sticks kick the can I think I know what kick the can is run sheep run I assume I know what that means were they chasing sheeps Maybe. Marbles and baseball. We all know what marbles and baseball is. Do you guys know what pom pom pull away and steel sticks are? Or even run sheep run? So, this is the schoolhouse right there, or what was the schoolhouse. And this actually used to be a two story schoolhouse. It's pretty cool because you can still see the steps. The steps are still intact right there. I really love finding places like this. Like, I really love ghost towns, period. Because I just love to read about all the stuff on how they lived back in the day. History. Yeah, the history and everything. It just has always been fascinating to me. That's why I've always been a little fascinated with the Amish. Because I love how they keep it old school and everything. And how they live like that. I mean, let's face it. I'm almost living like that right now. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a home. Well, I have my Jeep. That's my home on wheels. So I live in my Jeep and I travel to go explore and see mother nature everywhere and stay away from cities. And basically back then, there wasn't like huge cities like there is now. So what I'm doing is what these people were doing back in the day. I think that's pretty fascinating. I think it's pretty cool. Well, this area right here looks like it was the place to be. All this stuff right here in one area. So that over there, that was the post office. This over here, that was another store, a general store. And then way over there, you guys ready for this? They had a hotel. That was the hotel. And they really did have like a little striving town out here. It's pretty cool. And then over here, right across the street, those structures over there, he was the owner of all this. And that was his house. So pretty cool. There's a lot more to this town than uh, I thought. They really did have it all out here. Out in the middle of all this. In the middle of nowhere. Look at that. So awesome. Yep. This, this right here was the hotel, right there. 
that whole little area. That's pretty cool. I didn't expect there to have been a hotel. <laughs> 14 room hotel too. Mr. Gentry over here, that's the guy who owned all this. I bet you he had the biggest house out here out of everyone after owning the post office, the store, and the hotel. <laughs> 